Music and mathematics sound like two opposites to us. Mathematics is logical, it's about numbers and calculations. And music is artistic, it's free, it's a language of the soul. Yet surprisingly, music and math are very closely interrelated. And more than that, music is math. Music is the experience of mathematics. I'll show you how that works. Now, the first thing you need to think about is what is sound? because music uses sound. So what is a sound actually? Now a sound is vibrations that we pick up. It's vibrations that resonate at a frequency and reach our ears. For example, you drop a metal bar on the ground, it releases vibrations that we pick up. Or if you take a string that is connected on both sides and you pluck it, it will vibrate back and forth and make a sound that our ear picks up. Now, there are many different sounds in the world, many different noises, so what makes one of them different from the other? What quality makes them sound different? Some sound higher in pitch and some sound lower in a pitch. Well, what differentiates them is the frequency of their vibrations, which is that the faster it vibrates, the higher the frequency, and therefore we perceive a higher pitch, more ee up there, and the slower it vibrates, the lower the frequency, and therefore the lower it sounds to us, which is more down there, the lowest sounds that you can imagine. Now, that's what differentiates every sound from each other. Their frequency is what gives them their height. Meaning, if you hear two sounds, one sounding higher than the other, you simply know that the one which sounded higher was vibrating at a higher frequency back and forth, and that's why it sounded higher to you. Now, that is the nature of sound. Now, in music, we use sound to create songs, but can we use any sound? Can we use tones, whatever tone we desire? The answer is no, we don't use any tone we desire. In music, we use only a very specific group of sounds. Mathematicians and musicians for centuries have been working on the nature of music, and they discovered that as a group of tones which seem very interrelated to each other. Simply they make sense to us. We find them as if logical. So they went to study what is it that makes those tones sound logical to us and they discovered that only tones which have a nice mathematical relationship between them sound good to us and those that don't do not sound good to us. Now that would seem very strange. Why would we care what the mathematics is behind sound and where is the even mathematics behind sound? The way it works is like this. So, as I explained to you before, each note, each tone, each pitch, whatever you want to call it, has a certain frequency of vibrations which decide how high or low it sounds. Now, the tones that we tend to find meaningful are the tones that have a nice mathematical relationship with each other. What does a nice mathematical relationship mean? It means a relationship that is simple. For example, 4 divided by 3, or 3 divided by 2. Now, in music, we only use numbers which have such nice mathematical ratios between them. What do I mean by them? How is their mathematics in music? So I'll explain to you. So in music, this, the alphabet that we use to create music, just like in language, you have an ABC, so there's an alphabet with which we create songs, it's a system of seven sounds. Only seven sounds which we use to create most of the world's songs. Each sound that is in there is only in there because it's part of that mathematical system. So the way it works is like this. It starts with a home sound, then followed by six other sounds which each have a different mathematical ratio to the first one. They go up, so it goes like this. Those are the seven sounds. Now, they go up higher one from the other because their frequency changes. But they don't just have random frequencies. They're designed that each of the following six notes that follow the home pitch has a nice mathematical ratio to the home pitch. That means that if I were to take one of these following pitches and divide its frequency with the frequency of the home pitch, you'll get a nice mathematical ratio, like 3 divided by 2, 4 divided by 3, and so on. And that's why they're in our musical alphabet. They wouldn't be there if they didn't have such a nice mathematical ratio. Because, as funny as it sounds, we don't find 
noises meaningful unless it has a nice mathematical ratio. That's what differentiates noise from music. In music, they seem to have a relationship to each other, the sounds that we hear. That's why they sound logical to us. It sounds like it's saying something to us. That's the system of music, working purely on mathematics. Now, in a song, we work with those relationships. So, for example, the sound which has, let's say, a 3 um, divided by 2 ratio to home sounds more stable to us than the sound in our system which happens to have 8 divided by 5 ratio to home. That is because, s simply put, 3 divided by 2 is simpler than 8 divided by 5. And as funny as it sounds, our brain perceives that and it feels that this is more stable than the other. That's the power of music, that it gives us the ability to perceive mathematics. Now, that doesn't mean that you are aware of what ratios you're picking up. And if I were to ask you what numbers you just heard in music, no musicians in the world would tell you exactly the numbers. But that's not the point. The point is that we're perceiving it as if subconsciously. The, the, exact, the relationship itself affects us. The math behind it affects us, and that's what makes us feel that something is being expressed there. <laughs>